Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the community uh, meeting for KCP August 16th. We have a few things on the agenda. So let's see. Of course, we have the usual topic around issues, issues hygiene we do at the end. And we have two topics before. So Phil has the first one. Hey. Um, yeah, so I, I was on this community call um, a few weeks ago um, and uh, discussing this issue of the uh, namespace scoped finalizers <clears throat> as a feature request. Um, and the, the main sort of problem that this would be solving is that uh, it's possible uh, to think of to think of a workload in a namespace being synced to a sync target uh, and wanting to keep that up for a length of time until the finalizers are removed from, for example, the deployment isn't isn't really guaranteed to keep that up if other CRs in that uh, sync target get cleared out too early. And there isn't any particular, with the current um, advanced scheduling system, there isn't really a feasible way to make sure that the sync soft finalizers are properly added to every possible kind of resource that might exist. Uh, where um, if, the, if the finalizers were set at the namespace, and then sort of propagated down to every resource in that namespace that is synced, then that sort of solves that problem all at once, um, which seems like a good way to go, seeing as everything in a namespace is always synced to the same sync target. Anyway, you would think they should all be cleared up together rather than, it's hard to imagine a scenario where you would want the deployment to stay for longer than the service or, or whatever that's using it you know they're often kind of related to each other so uh, i did talk about this with you before um, and there was some good discussion about it then um, i was asked to provide a more sort of concrete example um, and i think the idea was to use that concrete example to maybe walk into a workshop or something where this could be discussed um, so i just wanted to bring it back up and say that i've, I've added the example now I'd be interested in knowing what the next steps we could take regarding this are. There was one question. I guess we have this, uh, we have asked last week. How do you know that the new target is up? Because that's the same problem, right? You don't know which components must be running. And yeah, so some we have. Kinds of, we do. Yeah, we but, have talked about um, some sort of health check to test whether a workload is up uh, that certainly is connected to this in terms of we don't want to allow a workload to be deleted from a sync target until we know it's up on the new one um, so i would think the health check is around the point of the health check is determining the event that causes us to remove the finalizers on the like losing sync target yes um, and so what this ticket in particular is talking about is how we can ensure that nothing is deleted from the losing sync target until we are ready for that to happen. And for that to cover resources that we don't even know will be synced yet. Makes sense. So how would you proceed with that? I guess it's not the, the place here to discuss. Should you maybe just start a thread and everybody who's interested just joins there, puts a name, and then we find the time where you can discuss it? Does this make sense? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to set up a, a call or something where we can talk through potential solutions um, to, to like implement this. Uh, I have discussed it briefly with Craig, and we, we have some thoughts on this already, but I can certainly set up a call um, if that's a good next step. I would suggest that. Okay, great. I'll I'll do that in the in the okay. next day or so. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And here to the next one. That's uh, cluster scopes quota. Andy. If you wouldn't mind just clicking on the link. Thank you. Uh, so I started a document to uh, add on to the quota support that we currently have, which is just for namespace scoped resources. And this is a proposal for a short term solution to extend that quota to do cluster 
scoped resources as well. Uh, this functionality is not available in upstream Kubernetes because if you're just working with a single cluster, you have to have uh, presumably an admin level permissions to create things that are cluster scoped. And so there just isn't support for quoting those things. But in a multi-tenant setup like KCP, where you own your workspace and you have admin there uh, and you might be sharing it with other people, it does make sense to be able to quota things like namespaces, other child workspaces, and so on. Um, so this is a proposal for how to do that. It is to be considered a short-term implementation because it's a, a bit hacky with reusing the resource quota type to make it uh, support cluster scoping. So the proposal here is that we designate a single namespace uh, in this in the proposal I call it admin. And in that namespace, if you create a resource quota, and if you could scroll down a little bit, stuff onto the example. If you create a resource quota with a, an annotation, which is currently proposed as experimental.quota.kcp.dev slash cluster scoped, then that will designate this particular resource quota instance as applying at the cluster scope. And the example here would allow 10 namespaces within a workspace, and it would allow 30 config maps across all namespaces in this workspace. You additionally can continue to do per namespace quota. So you could create a resource quota in some other namespace and say, this namespace can only have seven config maps, uh, but this does allow to, um, to do quota of cluster scope things. And the reason that I, I say that this is probably a short-term implementation is because it is a bit hacky. You, you have to know that you need to put it in the right namespace. You have to know that you need to put the annotation on there. And it's probably better long-term to have a separate type, kind of something like cluster resource quota that, uh, that would do this. And we also know that in the long term, we want to have aggregated quota that rolls up. So you could say at the top level of some hierarchy, I only want to have five total workspaces. And whether those workspaces are all at the same level or nested as, as children and grandchildren, the total would be five. We don't have support for that yet. So uh, this is an intermediate solution. If you're interested, please take a look. And um, I'm hoping to begin doing this soon-ish. Um, I don't have a, a date in mind for when we'd close comments, but maybe we could start a process where we, we do docs like this and we close comments and then move to implementation. And I guess we want that because we want a default, right? In every service, there should be a default upper bound. Like namespaces, nobody should create a 100,000 namespaces and bring yeah. down the cluster. Uh, and Frederick has a question about cluster resource quota. So it's kind of subtle. Um, the OpenShift cluster resource quota lets you uh, quota namespace scoped things in aggregate at the cluster level. So you could say, I only want 30 config maps across all namespaces in my cluster, but it doesn't let you quota cluster scoped things like namespaces and workspaces. So it's it solves like part of the problem, but not all of it, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. And yes, Stefan, to your point, um, I will have a, probably have a follow-up uh, proposal on uh, KCP-owned resources for things like resource quota, where the platform owner, whoever is running and managing KCP, can specify an annotation that indicates this resource is owned by the platform and users can't change it. So that would allow us to 
uh, with a cluster workspace type initializer, for example, inject a resource quota instance into every newly created workspace that says your quota on namespaces is three, and a user wouldn't be able to change that quota. Yeah, it's a cross reference. So permission claims should have that, right? So it's inverse or upper bound uh, permissions. Yeah. And we would need something based on label or on name, right? Either case would work. Name and namespace. Yeah. So if you're interested, uh, the doc here is open to the Google group. So as long as you're in the group, you can come in and comment. And um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So I don't think we have another topic. Let me check again. So does anybody have a more exciting topic than going through the issues? Now is the time. Otherwise, let's do our typical hygiene. Um, incoming issues, 10 new uh, issues. The first one. It's about default single image, Steve. Sure. Uh, we hit this earlier today. Somebody's got, there are a lot of docs on how to do bring your own compute. And they, some of them tell you which version of the syncer to use. It would be nice if when you emitted a syncer image, we defaulted one for you that just made sense so that people didn't have to worry about version skew. Do we have those images now? We could reference automatically. We've yeah. been building syncer images forever. So mm -hmm. yeah, but and they are text. That was my question basically. That we know from the mm -hmm. cutter binary. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we have all the uh, like these stream tags basically. Yeah, so I would put it on TVD. I, I think we have a couple of source version skew topics, right? We have another one, Steve. What you brought up um, around cube cutter in general, talking to KCP. I don't know if I wrote okay. it up, but yes. Yeah, I, I think we should just start thinking about those and build up something mm -hmm. which checks working skew and wants the user. Anyway, so that's a good one. Let's go back. Joachim. Yes, so basically what I've described there, when we delete uh, namespace in KCP. Um, the downstream namespace uh, remains not deleted. There is also another issue which I pushed the PR to fix it, which is that right now there are leftover resources on KCP namespaces and the finalizer in those resources block the deletion. But those are two different things. So I would call it time bombs. This is something which blocks production, right? I mean, we are, yeah. I mean, we are leaving a lot of namespaces yeah. in, in sync targets, so yeah. And you are working on it already, as I see, that's correct. I, well, that PR fixes other stuff, like okay. the, you can see the refer um, issue in the PR. But of course, while fixing that, I discovered that we are not deleting those namespaces. And it will require some, I would say, different changes as we are not monitoring the upstream namespaces or reacting to upstream namespaces changes. So and I wanted to get one fix first and then jump into the other stuff. Sounds good. So is this something for 0 08 or TBD? I would say that we need to fix that as soon as possible, honestly. So if you're on it, I would put the 0 08 here. Yeah. If you haven't planned it, um, OK. All right, next one. Uh, and to end flag, so I guess the piece here. I did a PR that's uh, in the queue that will re 
reduce our resource usage. So maybe this will fix it. I think we've only seen it once. And it, it literally was like, the, it took 28 seconds to list CRDs and then the test timed out. Awesome. Okay, let's see what happens. So PM merges, comes up again. It's not critical at the moment, right? No. Okay. So activity and next one. Not sure who that is. P1. See here? Maybe it's Chinese time zone. I have not looked at this one yet. Okay, if you delete API bindings, it's stuck. Th wait, this is these are our um, system owned bindings. Like, it, I mean, I guess you could delete them. You can delete them, sure. I uh, just I'll take it and look at it. Okay. Anyway, TBD and guys. Uh, just as a small hint, many of those certs, cert uh, SKU issues might be because of a, a VM that has been suspended ahead of many of those. Maybe just a retiring. Anyway, um, Eddie, take a look and then we can see. Yeah, I mean, if this is like it was trying to talk to the API server and the API server was down, like, I think just <laughs> close. Yeah, the the, 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 there shouldn't be network issues just by deleting a binding, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll it. Okay. Next one. Oh, yeah, this was the one discussed in Slack. I think it makes sense. Yeah. But help wanted on that one. Maybe good first issue. I see Robin already, so she reported. Maybe she can quickly fix it. Hopefully, maybe. Milestone TBD. Okay. Next one. Yeah, I, I asked in the in the thread about whether the binary download is is good enough, like. Download download a task tar file and unpack or something like that. Gives this the would same also be nice attempt. for anyone building on top though, and it's pretty easy yeah. to do. So I wouldn't worry. Can go over Lisa do that or do, do you do that in Pro somewhere? Uh, we can. I mean, yeah, we can just uh, do it in Pro. Same with uh, other okay. images. Should I sign you? Or is this help wanted and you help whoever would take it? Um, sure, yeah, I can take it. Um, if, we, if we're going to move to some probably images for the deployments anyway, then we'll probably have to iron out like the set of images. I think Chris was interested in learning about this, so we might put his name on here too. Multiple people, I think one can. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it has a home. Next one. So we need to delete the workspace. Oh, they're they're complaining about workspace versus cluster workspace. Oh, yeah. I, I thought about exactly that when doing a rewrite in the virtual workspace. Like we, of course, we project, but we do not interpret error messages. So we could do that with some heuristic, like replacing a string, something like that. It's kind of a bug. I agree. It's a little ugly, but I'm not sure it's. Super urgent. If somebody wants to work on that, I can give pointers. All right, next one. 
Similar thing, it seems. Isn't this normal like when the deletion timestamp is set and you delete again, then you just get the same message again? Uh, no, because in this case, the delete would have a finalizer. The finalizer clears and cube control will return back to the user. And you can see they did a get, there was no workspace, and then they did a delete and it said, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I would call this a bug probably in the um, virtual but it's, workspace but it's code. Get workspaces. Oh, I I might know. Um, we still have the informer, which is uh, filtered by the auth cache in the virtual workspace. So basically, we have little non-conformant behavior for listing. This could be the reason, maybe. Anyway, so. It's a bug. Anybody wants to look into that? It's not critical, is it? No. Okay. no. We do have priority labels, which we have not used at all, but we could if we wanted to. What would you put? Important long term. So, yeah, yeah, it's a bug, but um, I'm not completely sure it's really this would cause, but somebody has to invest some time. Okay, next one. There is resources field not declared in schema should return error. Oh, is it, isn't this an upstream issue actually? I don't think so. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I I don't think so. In fact, it seems that we've been debugging that with Guy. I don't know if Guy is here. Yes. I um, do. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So maybe you, you could explain as well. Um, yes. Yeah, sure. I, I, so I created a, a deployment with a. I converted the state visitor to deployment. So the service name was there uh, by accident, which is not in the schema. And then, um, and then we saw this should not happen here in the log and. Nothing else. I could create the deployment just fine in KCP, and uh, David helped me debug, and we found the exact point. But then we found out that this field was out of schema, and uh, when I tried the same thing on on API server in kind, I I just got the error from the server, of course, but nothing nothing KCP. So, yeah, my, so it, my, it, it, isn't the validation client side? Yeah, yeah, it's something like it it's not validation. That, it's pruning, right? Client side. Yes. Be? Yes, exactly. It seems to me that that we, uh, in in the way we use the CRDs, uh, or maybe in the way the CRD, uh, yeah, mainly uh, handler has been tricked for KCP. Maybe some 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 bug uh, is still there since quite some time, so that uh, it it doesn't uh, issue. It it supports additional fields. Because you have such an option when you, you know, create the the all the schema validators and all this stuff, and it might be that uh, we have this error since quite some time. Because you know, it's it's very, you know, it's a very specific case. Uh, the, the cases where you you know create an object um, and add a field uh, which is not su supported is not, you, not very. Have you tried? Have you tried uh, on the CAD stream? What happens? The same thing, or is it different? Uh, yeah. No, I tried on deployment. Uh, yeah, for example, you mean on 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 uh, upstream cube, non KCP one, the non the non fork one. Okay. Oh wait, maybe I misunderstood. So he, he talked about server side, which is so this this message here is server side. Yes, right? exactly. So the the thing but is this that one is client side, but it's from the server. No, uh, so, no the validation happens client side from the schema from. Discovery, yeah. I think. No, no, but if it was in the client side, then uh, uh, then this would would have uh, also failed in the first case. Yeah, the thing is that no, normally it's... No. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Maybe deployments are native, right? So it could be that locally we also have JSON or YAML 
muffling and muffling. So maybe there's pooling up. Well, I, I don't know, but what, what I, th I mean, my feeling is that there is a bug in the way we support in the KCP fork of Cube, in the way we support um, open API schemas for the uh, standard uh, resources, you know, for the native resources like deployments, mm -hmm. because there is mm -hmm. obviously a specific case in the KCP Cube, uh, which included the support of open API, uh, uh, you know, and, and also server side um, apply and all this stuff for mm -hmm. CRDs, but only in the case of, of native uh, types. And I think that in the way it has been hacked, maybe from the beginning, there is mm -hmm. some bug that that accepts, though it shouldn't, uh, okay. you know, fields so that are, that are not in the schema. Sounds like I should assign you, probably, <laughs> because I can, no yeah. I mean, I I can have a look because I I went into this code uh, initially. Yeah. If you don't find it, you can sure. remove yourself and add a comment. Yeah. Yeah. Surely. But please, nobody else will have any uh, any idea what happened there. So. Thanks. Okay. Next one. Cannot delete the namespace. Having a workload, this is your team, it's related to your work there. I think so, yeah. That's a uh, you can see, I guess, if you scroll down a little bit, there will be the that. reference from, yeah. Oh, I see. So this one was, that. I see. And then you hit the other uh, issue as well. I, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's. Transparent multi cluster, and there is a fix already, which means you're it, and it's assigned to you. It's a bug. All right, so I think we have seen all of them. Let's see. Okay, a new one 12 minutes ago, Steve. It was for, uh, what you what you talked about, right? Yeah, Which is cute. Okay. Um, are you working on that, or is it just well, just just a DS in stack what we talked about? I can, yeah. Once I mean, if you shorter time, yeah. If you work on that, that's a sign. If we're happy with the first pass, it just like <laughs> doesn't equality. I think it's a moment. It's a moment. Like, it should be a zero seven version if you have a zero seven client, right? Something like yeah. that. And we can weaken that, but at the moment things break, so it's not nice for users. All right, so far I think it's empty. So did anybody add something new? Otherwise, it's a short meeting, 30 minutes. So is there any topic anybody wants to talk about? Okay, if there's no topic, then thank you, everybody. Short meeting, 30 minutes back for everybody. And see you next week. Bye. Thanks. See you. Bye. 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 Thank you.